This episode is brought to you by Sol de Janeiro. At Sol de Janeiro, touch isn't just for screens. Physical connection is so essential to how we communicate. It's infused in everything we offer. Sense so irresistible, PDA is guaranteed. Textures are so luscious, skin is huggable. Get into a Sol de Janeiro state of mind. Receive 10% off on your first order on soldejanero.com. Plus free shipping with the code soldejanero10. The country's defending netball champions are eyeing up another title. So how does wonder coach Yvette McCausland jury make sure her team peaks at the right time? And would she ever want to take the reins of the Silver Ferns? How a team of women from an entirely different sport are inspiring the football ferns to back themselves for the biggest event on the calendar, which is only just around the corner. And we ask the awkward question, is super rugby boring? Kia ora, I'm Zoe George and this is The Podium, sports news but not as you know it from stuff. There isn't a lot of it. McCausland Jury hasn't done in netball, but she's hoping to repeat a career feat by winning back-to-back ANZ Premiership titles with the Central Pulse for the second time. The superstar coach, who's Nati Awa and Napuhi, joined me for a chat about how to get top athletes peaking at just the right moment of a condensed season and whether we'd ever see her back in the Silver Ferns leadership team. The Pulse have won 10 games, their last eight games in a row, but they had a bit of a shaky start. So how do you get them to peak at the right time? Yeah, look, I think there's a real balance between making sure physically we keep some load on, um, but at the same time mentally getting a a bit of a break. Obviously there was that four in a row losses, which really sends you into a bit of a spiral. But um, look, it, throughout that, they maintained um, a real focus. So they, and with only, you know, within those games, there were very few points. Some of them were by one. So what a difference it makes winning by one and losing by one. But yeah, look, overall, I think that um, for us now, we know we're in that playoff section. We've just got to wait for the final rounds this weekend to help ourselves, we've got to get another win. And so that's our, you know, short-term focus, um, notwithstanding the fact that there's then potentially two games post that. So, yeah, look, I think for me there's two things. One is remaining really focused that they know their core roles and that they're feeling really confident about their roles and that we keep things really simple so we're not looking to make significant changes in terms of plans or what the week looks like or anything that would, you know, unsettle them, but um, at the same time, keeping keeping finding little pockets of energy. How do you stop that spiral from happening, right? I mean, when a team get in, gets in that funk, it can be really hard to dig mm. back some courage or, you know, get some winning ways going. So what do you do as a coach to get that inspiration going? Yeah, look, I think for me, it's just about being consistent, win or lose, and being really clear at looking at the bits that matter, because it can... You know, you can get sidetracked emotionally and you can get sidetracked about things that, um, you know, one-off plays or one missed shot. And it's never about one thing that causes the challenge. So for me, it's about looking back. Did we have the right plan? Where are the little numbers that we can shift on and that we've got potential? But most importantly, reassuring players about why they... They're here, what they're good at, and making sure that we keep working to their strengths and looking at our game plan that accentuates their strengths. Any chance we'll see you in the Silver Ferns coaching set up again? Oh, look, you know, you never say never. I think they're doing a great job and they've had huge success and we hope for this World Cup. It's a huge mission and while I have the privilege of heading over there as an assistant with Fiji, it's a really different um, pressure that that we'll be under in comparison to the silver ferns. So you never say never, but my you know support is there with them in terms of making sure that from this perspective, in terms of being a coach here with the Pulse, that we're working hard to prepare players that that can compete there, and and they've got to sit back and wait for that selection on June seven, and and then our part from there is just to get behind them all. So. Yeah, look forward to it. And and no doubt there'll be opportunities ahead down the road and who knows. But um, right now they've got the team they need in terms of their coaching and management panel. So, yeah, they have my full support. Can we win the World Cup? We can always win. I eh? I mean, everything's possible. That's what I love about this game. Every week, look at this competition. Every week anybody can win a match and you just don't know. You've just any given day and you, you get given the ball at halfway Um, We take turns, and so that's always really lovely. So, you know, every game should be a draw technically, but um, 
the challenge of making decisions under pressure and, and managing performance is huge. But I know that they've got a really good, you know, busy campaign leading into this World Cup to prepare this group and they'll do everything they can. So we've got great players. I think we've got every ability to to go back to back. So fingers crossed it all works. So I'm excited I'm going to be able to be there to see it. Yvette, it's been lovely chatting. Pleasure. Na mihi. We've had so much exciting rugby of late. The Sevens teams both claiming victory in France, the Black Ferns last year. So it feels a bit odd to be asking whether Super Rugby is boring. But that's the allegation levelled at the competition and a man who's never short of an opinion is here. Kia ora, Stuff Sports columnist Mark Reason. Hello Zoe. Uh, Super Rugby, is it boring? (laughs) Well... A lot of people in New Zealand are finding it boring. I've been told a number of people who switched off or didn't bother to watch at the weekend. I won't mention all of those names, but... Um, <laughs> Wayne but, uh, Smith yeah, is amongst the cra- that group. The crowds, are, the crowds are terrible at the stadiums, by and large. Uh, um, obviously, Fiji has superb crowds, and um, I think the Crusaders was pretty much a sold out at the weekend, as was the Chiefs the other week. But But generally, they've been pretty awful... And uh, they claim the viewing figures are up, but I'm pretty sceptical about that, to be honest. Why are people turning it off? Are you turning it off? Uh, I'm not turning it off because I have to watch it all for work. (laughs) (laughs) But if I was a a, a normal punter, I wouldn't watch nearly as much as I do. I'd probably watch um, what the one big game of the weekend and, and possibly... Uh, the Drua, if they were playing at home, because there's usually a buzz about them. Uh, And then I would probably tend to a bit of European watching after that. Tell me why it's boring. It's, uh, there are lots of reasons it's not doing very well. Uh, The biggest one at this time of the season is for all the New Zealand clubs, other than the Highlanders, the whole thing's a complete irrelevance. Because if you've got a 12-team competition and five Australian teams, then the Australian teams are going to be substandard because they don't have the player depth because of all the other sports that their top talent goes into. Um, So, but they insist on having these five teams for commercial reasons, but it's hurting the competition. New Zealand rugby hates it, and I quite sympathise with them. Uh, There should be three Australian teams because what you have at the moment from New Zealand point of view, all these matches don't really matter until you get to a knockout stage, which is eight teams from the 12 going through. So what are we watching at the moment? Irrelevant footy most of the time. Irrelevant footy, uh, but I don't think that the Chiefs will think it's irrelevant because they're currently top of the table and possibly the team to beat this season. They are undoubtedly the team to beat. Uh, It was notable uh, how much poorer they were at the weekend without some of their big forwards and also um, they had a lot of line speed put on them as well. Uh, The defence against them was very, very good and at times Mackenzie struggled a a little bit with that, I thought, which he hasn't uh, in previous matches. So it will be interesting to see how they roll when the big games come on, Um, but they've been the most entertaining team to watch as well because of their back three has been superb. Um, and I think and hope two of them might might get on to the plane to the World Cup as as bolters. Well, with Super Rugby not being that inspiring, what does that mean for the All Blacks in the build-up to the Rugby World Cup happening in September? Well, I think the biggest thing they miss is South African opposition uh, because of the line speed the South Africans bring and because of the sheer physicality of their forwards. So a lot of the time over here at the moment against Australian teams, it's kind of popcorn footy and and chuck the ball about all over the place and and win by 46 points to 20 or something like that. Um, So it's not very good preparation for the kind of hard rushing defences and much more physical games they're going to get at the World Cup. So I think that gives um, the All Blacks coaches difficulty with the preparation and and slight difficulty with, with selection when you're not looking at like for like in terms of what they're going to to face in France in in later in the year. Mm, well, Mark Reason, thank you very much. Pleasure.
The football ferns are, of course, looking ahead to the World Cup, which starts in a little over 60 days. Oh, so close. But what you might be surprised by is who's inspiring the team to do their best. Defender Claudia Bunge told sports reporter Andrew Vorman she chats to star black fern kicker Renee Holmes. And the football women are so inspired by what their rugby counterparts achieved. Yeah, it was amazing what the black ferns did and also her having like a massive role playing big minutes and being like their starting kicker um, was so cool. We were actually in Christchurch when the um, uh, World Cup final was on um, and I think we had just had our game and all the girls were down in the hotel watching the game and yeah, we went crazy. It was so awesome to see and you know, she was obviously a very good football player as well but um, yeah, it's awesome to see her, you know, do well and um, she's been very successful. Um, she probably, in my opinion, would have been a really good football player as well if she kept at it, but it's good to see that her kicking skills are coming in handy. Um, and yeah, what they did uh, last year was huge and hopefully we can um, take a bit from what they did um, and yeah, keep that momentum going for the Ryan's game. But it's not just the people on the pitch gearing up for the event. Despite it being one of the world's biggest sports events, it simply would not run without the energy of nearly 5,000 volunteers. Among them will be Jenna Vreberg, assistant principal at Wellington College, one of the biggest boys' schools in the capital, and she's with me now. Hi, Jenna. Thanks, Zoe. Why did you decide to be a volunteer for the FIFA World Cup? Um, In a nutshell, I really just wanted to be involved. Um, I am a sportswoman. I've played sport all my life. Uh, Football and softball are my main sports, but I've played a bit of volleyball. I've played a bit of everything in my younger days. Um... And I've just been really encouraged and really proud of what's happening in women's sport at the moment. And I don't think I ever had the dedication required to make it on my own back when I was a teenager. But it never really seemed like a viable option in the 90s, 2000s for me to pave out a a career in sport for me. Um, Netball was never my thing, and so every other sport really wasn't big, and I know netball still struggled as well. So I find myself getting really emotional when I see what's happening with women's sport at the moment. Um, And case in point, I went to a um, Phoenix women's game earlier this year, season ticket holder. Nice. (laughs) Um, And I found myself a blubbery mess in the stands at the 80-minute mark when the Yellow Fever took their shirts off and swung them around for the women. And I think it was the fact that it was a lot of men treating women exactly the same and really valuing them in their space. So, yeah, fierce feminist, but a blubbery feminist the older I get. Um, And this FIFA Women's World Cup, I just wanted to be part of making it happen and continuing this glass ceiling breaking that we're seeing happening. Mm. So, yeah. 2,000 volunteers, I understand, for the World Cup, which is very exciting. So what are you going to be doing? I am going to be involved in match operations, which I am still yet to have my training. But from what I can tell, it is basically being a gopher behind the scenes. So helping out with setting up changing rooms, setting up meeting rooms, helping direct people, being in and around Wellington Stadium, in the halls in the back there, helping things happen. Are you... Other than the football fans, obviously. (laughs) Is there a team that you will be keeping an eye out on? I think, I mean, America are always, Team USA are going to be right up there, but I also um, have Dutch heritage, so I am a big fan of the Netherlands and always follow them, male or female, and the Euros are in the World Cup, so... I will be watching them definitely. Will, will you be working that game? Or I'm you... hope, I hope so. We haven't had our shifts allocated. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we might see in the stand. Jenna, thanks. Thanks, Zoe. Here's what else is making headlines. Kiwi golfers Ryan Fox and Steve Alka are back in action this weekend for the PGA at Oak Hill Country Club in New York. They are chasing a 15 million Prize purse, Alka tees off at 11 and Fox at 11.30 Thursday night New Zealand time. And it was a fast turnaround for Fox, who was home for the birth of a second child earlier this week. Former Warriors player Manu Vatuvai, who was sentenced last March to three years and seven months for importing methamphetamine, will return to his old club's well-being department as he's set to be released from prison on parole on May 31st. 
World Rugby has announced in a world first they'll be trialling smart ball technology in a live match officiating capacity at the World Rugby Under-20 Championship in South Africa in June. It will be able to track the ball and show if the ball's been passed forward, has gone over the try line, where it's been touched in flight, and if line-out throws were straight. Very cool. And speaking of the under-20s, the New Zealand team will face under-20s Wallabies in two World Cup warm-up games in Wellington on Monday the 29th of May and Saturday the 3rd of June. It's a great chance to spot some super talent before they head off to the championships. And that's the podium. I'm Zoe George, and on behalf of our guests this week, producer John O'Williams and sound engineer John Ropiha, thanks for listening. You can get in touch with us now. Do you think super rugby is boring? Email the podium at stuff.co.nz. We'll see you next Thursday. Until then, kakete, go well. Investing, KiwiSaver, retirement, compound interest, budgeting, financial planning. Are you still awake? Ever think it was time women got a seat at the table when it comes to talking and understanding finance? Yeah, us too. This is Power Money Security, a podcast redefining PMS for financially empowered females. And yes, I'm talking to you, you incredible wahine. You'll hear from amazing women who are passionate about making the financial world more accessible. You'll hear inspiring stories from women leading the charge in making money and in creating pathways for other women to come along. And you'll get real world advice on how to get our finances in order and plan a strong financial future. Listen and subscribe to Power Money Security, brought to you by The Table, where Kiwi women talk money. Sponsored by Mercer.